welcome to living as missionary disciples going away. My name is Father Frank Donio. And I'm Dr. Susan Timoney. And we're happy for us to, for you to join us as we begin the season of Lent. And let us begin as we begin all things with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this time together. We ask that as we enter into this season of Lent, we may recognize always that we are missionary disciples, both followers of Christ and also sent by him. As we enter into the discipline of Lent, of prayer, of fasting, of almsgiving, that it may be a time for us to deepen our missionary discipleship and go out into the world in love and also in care of our fellow human beings. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dr. Timmy, sometimes I think there are people who may not understand the, the term missionary disciples. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that and give a, give a sense of where that's coming from. You know, I love this idea of beginning our reflection with who is a missionary disciple because it reminds us that all of us are missionary disciples by virtue of our baptism. But as you said in the opening prayer, it really calls to mind that we're not simply followers of Jesus. Jesus also sends us. And, and so Lent is this opportunity to say, well, well, where is it that Jesus has sent me? And as a follower, called to say that we're missionary in the sense also that we've got a message to share, that something of our encounter with Jesus we're called to share with others. And that sharing can come in a variety of forms. Pope Francis talks about being a missionary disciple in Evangelii Gaudium, which is his document called Joy of the Gospel. And in that, he talks about how we are not only followers, but it's sent, as Dr. Timoney was saying. But this is not just simply Pope Francis. This goes back to the Second Vatican Council, and as far back as also St. Vincent Pallotti talking about everybody being an apostle, sent. And so therefore, as we have this encounter with Christ, we need to recognize that we're not only followers, we're not only called by him, but we are sent by him. And so when we look at this, it's important for us to look at the discipline of Lent, the different aspects of Lent that we talk about a mm -hmm. great deal, and how does this now move us forward? Let's look at prayer for a moment. Prayer offers us an opportunity to encounter Christ, both our communal prayer and our individual prayer, as a way for us to be able to keep connected, not only with each other as the community of faith, but certainly with God. I think um, this idea of looking at prayer in the context of missionary disciple also reminds us that Lent isn't just about me. Sometimes we come to Lent thinking it's spiritual boot camp, and by God, I'm going to be a different person at the end of 40 days, when what, what I think, especially when it comes to prayer, it's that reminder of we're deepening our relationship with Jesus. We're trying to be more intentional about the, the quality of our prayer, and hopefully the quantity, um, and so for me, one of the things I love is to say, why don't I try a different way of praying during Lent? Is this new style, I, have I not prayed a rosary in a long time and maybe I would find new meaning in the rosary? Or w just taking time to be, to imagine myself in conversation with the Lord. Mm -hmm. What would that conversation look like? And even in our communal prayer, we, we all know that Ash Wednesday is usually very crowded <laughs> at most Catholic churches. And it's really an opportunity for us who are active Catholics and are, are engaged on a regular mm -hmm. basis to be able to reach out to our brothers and sisters. And especially during the season of Lent, it, it's in the community of faith that gathers every Sunday. And for some people, it may also be daily Mass that gathers, but at the end is told, go. Glorify the Lord by your life is one of the endings that mm -hmm. I, uh, I most like, the dismissal from Mass. And I think that's the way that we should see it and recognize that we're meant to go out mm -hmm. and, and not just simply be within the church alone. That is where we are nourished, mm -hmm. particularly Absolutely. by the Eucharist, Absolutely. to be able to go forward. Mm -hmm. And what about fasting? So I love to bring up my niece, Caroline. When she was four, my brother decided um, to teach them what Lent was about and talked about the need to love Jesus, the need to show your love for Jesus. And so as a family, they were going to give up cookies in order to show their love okay. for Jesus. And he looks up and he sees Caroline crying, tears coming down her face. And he said, Caroline, you're sad. And she said, Daddy, 
I can love Jesus and eat cookies too. <laughs> and isn't that exactly right? Right, you know, eating sushi and not meat on Friday, giving up chocolate or beer during Lent in and of itself is not going to make us love Jesus more. The idea of the fasting, right, is to say, I want to I be reminded every day during Lent that this is a special period. So for me, I know I want to combine my fasting with something like rice bowl, right? So that um, the money I may save by not buying um, a glass of wine with dinner or not picking up a bar of chocolate can go into that rice bowl, but can more importantly remind me of the people who are suffering. And so through prayer, through this small act, I can be intentional about recognizing how I'm connected to my brothers and sisters who are, who are suffering and who are in pain and who are hungry. <laughs> and, and who are, are, are disconnected sometimes from particularly also the, the life of faith. That mm -hmm. fasting is also a mm -hmm. sacrifice that we can make for our brothers and sisters, particularly those who are, are far away, those that Pope Francis would say are on the peripheries. Mm -hmm. They could be spiritual peripheries, but they're also the ones that are the, the material ones, the, the poor, the struggling, the suffering, those who are, are dealing with all types of, of situations in life. And our fasting puts us also in solidarity with them, that we can pull away from the desires that we have mm -hmm. to somehow have, I can have this and I can have it instantly. But not everybody can do yeah. that. And, and I think, too, when we say that one of the foundational um, charisms of the missionary disciple is joy, one of the things I've been thinking about is what do I need to fast from that mm -hmm. does not make me joyful? I mean, where are those things that I do that rather than increasing my sense of joy actually make me more grumpy or more unhappy or more fearful? Um, and, and so I think just that idea of let's fast from the things that in fact don't um, don't reveal who we are as a missionary disciple. Right, and I, I think if, if we fast from our, our cell phone though, that, that could really, <laughs> I think, uh, upset a few people, but it, it can be something that w is mm -hmm. something for us to set aside because it can be a big distraction mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. Even the way that we're coming to people through Facebook can also be a distraction and something that, that maybe adds to uh, our pulling away from Christ rather than being more in engaged. And it's not anything that's against the particular thing. It's just like with food or it's <laughs> like similar to different things that we might give up. The reality is not the thing itself. It's what do we do with it? How do we use it? Exactly. It's such a means to the end, right? The right. idea of fasting is that it's moving us closer to God and it's moving us away from those things that keep us from God. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. a danger sometimes when we give up something for Lent mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, oh, now I can have it in full and then some once Easter comes. That's not really the attitude that we're, we're trying to engender in, and the church is in an understanding of fasting that's mm -hmm. really ongoing. Which then brings us to the next spiritual practice mm -hmm. of almsgiving. How we can give of ourselves in time, talent, and treasure and move beyond self to the other. Here I would say probably is that part of this three-pronged discipline that most asks us to look at our relationships. And I think also to assess the caliber, as Pope Benedict liked to say, of our generosity, right? How easy is it for us um, to take money out of our pocket and to give it to someone on the street who looks like they need a cup of coffee or they need something to eat? Or how easy is it for us to say, you know what, I need to think more about the way in which I spend my money. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do I feel about being generous? I mean, sometimes we do it reluctantly. I think the idea of almsgiving is to say, let's practice being extravagant, as Mary Magdalene was, <laughs> right, in her service to the Lord. Let's be extravagant in whatever way that may mean to us in terms of reminding ourselves that what we've been given is a gift. And to some extent, we need to share that gift. And what do we do with our time? As so many people will say oh they're gosh. so busy. And yet mm. when we start to maybe peel back that mm -hmm. and look and self-reflect and say, what am I spending my time on? Mm -hmm. What am I using the talent that God has given me? Mm -hmm. That's really, truly a God-given gift. And how am I using it for other people who are around me? Mm -hmm. And not just simply those that I like or those I feel mm -hmm. comfortable with, but as a missionary disciple, going to the people who are most in need, 
and how do we reflect on it? that really comes to us through our discernment through prayer mm -hmm. and through our fasting which focuses us on on greater solidarity with the other greater connection with God mm -hmm. and through our in and through our prayer and then this giving of self in time talent and treasure I mean don't we think of uh, I always think of Teresa of Lisieux so she lived within a monastery but boy she could have lived in a cubicle at the office in the sense of it came to her that she needed to work harder to love the least likable person Very true. in her community. And so I think all of us probably could identify someone who is the least likable. And just thinking about what would it mean to approach them rather than the least likable as saying, what, what can I give um, today? And, and so how do, I, how do I create that balance, right, of time, talent, and treasure? Those are three of the basic gifts that we know that God has given us. And how do we think about the right mix of those in the way that we share our lives with others? We thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. And we invite you to leave your comments and questions, and Dr. Timney and I will answer them after our time together here on Facebook Live. Go to catholicapostolatecenter.org, where we have a number. Thank you, Father Frank, and thank you for listening. And may you have a blessed Lent, and may the charity of Christ urge us on.